Welcome to Hill Talk Tuesdays with Lisa, where transformation begins as we evoke, embrace, and evolve. Greetings, 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 and welcome to Hill Talk Tuesdays. This is Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? And this is amazing because today is the 11th, 7 11. Mm. And what does 7 11 remind me of? power numbers, 11, steady, strong, and we stand up for who we are. Oh, wow. Okay. Right? So welcome for to all of you who are present and with us. I'm Lisa Bubari, and, and this is Real Talk with Lisa. Today, I have a special guest, and a special guest of mine is Yulin Lee. So welcome, Yulin. Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity to uh, to be having this conversation with you. And I just wanted to um, ask before we move forward, do you want to go ahead and record as well, just in case the live is yes. not working? You're so good. Okay, record. Yeah, okay. that way we're safe. Wonderful. So I am so excited for today because um, you and I met over about two years ago. And you know, um, everybody asks me, why do you go to all these uh, places and seminars and everything? This is exactly why I love going to seminars, to retreats, to a lot of things, because we get to meet special people who become special in our life. And we've known each other for about two years. And I just adore who you are. Oh, and thank of you. course, yeah. And of course, the picture is there. The person is real. And let's talk about unleashing who you are and about your book. So we're going to talk about all of that. So again, welcome you, Lynn. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So we met, and I want to go back to the beginning. We met because we were we are both co-authors on the book, The Powerful Female Immigrants. Mm -hmm. And when I read your story, it was so heartwarming. Oh, thank um, you. Yeah. You know, you talk about your life in that book, that you came to the United States when you were 13 years old, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so many of us has, have this conception that you know being Asian you must be very smart you must be very powerful or influential and also rich in everything so the beginning of your life was not affluent far from that far from that you know I was born in China and so you know back then you know this is more than 50 years ago in China is a very different world than it what it is today and so mm. You know, my background is really coming from very, very modest, very, and, and it's not that, you know, our family were particularly poor. It's just like the whole country was, that was the state of the whole country where we literally just had um, enough food to eat and, and roof over our head, but never really had more than that. And so I, I grew up growing up, I did not have one single toy, uh, believe it or not, so so I, in my childhood memory was playing in the alleys with the other kids with rocks and rubber bands. So that was our entertainment for the year, for, for the childhood. You know, you say something like that. And yet I think one of the things that are lacking for children nowadays is play yeah. outside and with other children instead of just this telephone. That's and right. IPad. That's right. And, and that's why, you know, writing this particular book, you know, The Power for Immigrant, Female Immigrant, it actually made me to really kind of go back to my life before the U.S., which, you know, it's been, I've been here for 42 years. And so it's been a long journey and I've spent most of my life here. And so it was actually kind of a nice, you know, walk down the mem memory lane. And what I really realized is that um, growing up, I never had money, but mm. because the way I was brought up in our family that um, I never felt poor and so I, I I you know this is a very key one of the key messages that I wanted to give to everyone as a money coach is that how you feel about yourself you know your self-identity around money 
has nothing to do with how many zeros you have in the bank account. It's all inside of you. And when you feel rich and powerful, and that's coming in from inside your own, you know, inner power, then, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't matter. And, but I, I say it, but then at the same time, when you are powerful inside, you naturally start accumulating wealth. It becomes easier. And so oftentimes the, the tug of war, the mental struggle is really what's blocking us from having more wealth. Okay. So I have some notes over here. We're mm -hmm. going to be talking about that. And so one of the things is you come into this country and yes, you're talking about the struggle and your parents and translating for your parents and everything. And you go to the university, you learn computer science and become a software engineer, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Which brings you to a level of status, knowing, mm -hmm. education, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So at what point does Yulin realize that who I am is more than my title, it's more than my education, it's more than being a daughter or a wife. Yeah. And I know you're a mom to a beautiful, beautiful girl. So how do we come to understand that money does not make me who I am, but I make... So do we have money blocks we all do. I think okay. we all do, right? Um, so, but to answer your first question, you know, at which point from in my own personal life became that 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 point of starting to shift like internally. And I think that right. was probably when I was around 35. Okay. And looking back, that was really the start of my personal growth journey on, you know, into onto this more kind of a spiritual path. Um, before that, I was like any other typical younger people, especially from the Asian families, you work hard, you get good grades and, you know, you get a good job and, you know, you, right. and I bought my first house two years after I graduated from college. So I was checking, you know, all the boxes I was doing, doing, doing until the high I, achiever. I was an achiever until a point where, and it wasn't like intentionally, I said, oh, I'm going to do this. It just naturally came on, but it naturally came on as actually unhappiness. I, well, I was, I was going through a phase where I was very, very unhappy with myself. And, you know, even I, I remember my mom would say like, what's wrong with you? You have everything. Like you have a, you have a good job. You have a good husband. You have two kids. You have, you know, beautiful life. Like what more do you want? Um, but what more do I want was, I wasn't clear. But there was something internally that I felt unhappy. And I think that was, you know, now looking back, it was really kind of the beginning of, of searching for a purpose in life. You know, the, the realization that um, the quote unquote fulfillment as we, as I knew it before, and those fulfillments were, you know, filled by uh, material stuff and, and, and hard accomplishments to more going inward and say, you know, what is really the meaning of life? What is the purpose of life? And what is the meaning in the things I do every day? And so, so yeah, so that was, I would say around 35. Okay. So one of the things you talk about uh, Unleashed, the book about, and most of your coaching that you do about money and everything is, especially with women. Mm-hmm to empower with uh, women with money with finances with wealth management mm -hmm. right so uh, you know i was watching a movie it, the reason i'm saying this because uh, this couple uh, were in an advertising company and they had achieved a partnership and another company came and offered her uh, the lead uh, of marketing at a bigger company and she felt I can't overshadow him which is her partner um, because she loved him and saying like I can't leave him here and go higher 
So she refused the job. And what happened was they offered it to him and he immediately said, yes, came mm. home and said, they offered me the position. This is the best thing. And she was like, but they offered it to me first. And he says, well, what do you mean? Why didn't you take it? And she yeah. said, because I couldn't. So do we have this notion of women are more emotional? They they don't believe they are worthy. They don't deserve. Or what what is this thing about money in women? And yet for a man, it's like it's a given higher status and everything. They believe their oh. status and success far more women than women do. Yeah, absolutely. I I think you're you're right in that you know in my workings with many women, um, it, it's it's very obvious that so many women we tend to be, uh, we put ourselves down when we play small, when it comes to money and finance, and there's multiple reasons why, right? I mean, and I I think it's you know overall, if I had to generalize. It is a result of centuries of conditioning, mm. of, you know, women's role in a society that, you know, our role was, is, is to take, fa- take care of family and making money, going out, doing these things are the men's role. Now, that might have been true in the past, but we all know it's no longer the case. But those conditioning has been so deep rooted for hundreds of years. It's almost like in our DNA. So it is going to take time to to shift out of that. And I, I am seeing that shift. Um, but then, you know, just the story, I'm listening to the story you were describing. I think even on top of that, there's the another layer, which may not just be women, but it, it's just more of a human. Right. That sometimes we we tend to project, we, we, we think about certain things and we project our own images, our own identities on other th- people and other things. So I, I think in this particular case, if she was more aware of her own internal uh, kind of how she's wired to think about these things, um, maybe she could have, you know, before flat out just refusing it, she did get the position, a conversation at least with him and say, what do you think? Right. And so I think that's also something really important for people to remember is to, to to not to necessarily project our own assumptions. Right. So, is it, is money, the blocks and everything, um, is it mindset? Is it a belief? Is it our family values or is it self-worth? And how do we come to overcome such blocks? Yeah, well, you know, it's, it's, it's a ball of everything, right? All mixed together. And so I mean, that is literally the work that I do with clients is, is, you know, I, I like to make the analogy of it's like, it feels like it's a peeling an onion, right? So you start working on the outer layer. Yeah. And so, and then you find something else underneath and then you, you peel away another layer and you peel another layer. And then really at the core of it, that is your true self. That, mm-hmm. that is, you know, your, your beautiful self that with everything you need and all the power you need to do anything in the world. But is it is those layers and where those layers come from, you know, society, family, and all of that. So, how do we overcome it? I think you know the one of the most important thing is is to really reframe how we think about money and how we look at money. Um, to me, money is just like anything in our anything else in our life. You know, whether it's health or relationship, it's something that needs to be nurtured. Um, mm. But. The, the thing is, you know, with health and relationships, for example, we all know we need to have good health and we all know we, we need healthy and good relationship in our lives because it, it would be healthy for us as human beings. We need connections. Um, but we don't, all, we don't automatically think we also need, you know, good money environment and, and, you know, situations because we've been also, again, conditioned to think of money as the source of evil and, you know, we hear all that, you know, that everywhere, but, you know, it's, so this is where we need to kind of step back and say, you know, money is just a tool. It's just a tool that we actually created, like human created this money thing in the past. It was just bartering. So it's just a tool that we created, 
but what is what makes money so powerful is that it actually brings out the good and the evil in all of us so oftentimes we hear stories and uh, everywhere right so somebody you know get rich and then they start to like you know like feel like they're kind of above other people they're living on the clouds you know whatever they start to lose their ground and then people blame money for it but it's it's like no that was in him it was just money who brought it out right so so does we, money define who we are like our success is it measured by money or is it measured by something else because i think nowadays with all the media social media everything people are really look at social media and they say well that person must be very successful look, look at the car look at this look at where they're going and yet they I, I don't believe money defines who we are, and yet it defines our yeah. success. Yeah, it, it uh, yeah, it, and then that's why you know it's such a that's why I love working in this field because money is such a multifaceted thing, right? That money definitely. So I, I actually had a very similar conversation with another person uh, last week, um, and we talked about how you know how money comes into our own businesses, like as a entrepreneur how we think about the work that we do we really want to serve others and so for some of us sometimes we actually struggle with having making enough money from the the service that we want to do so how do you how do you reconcile those those differences and um and so to me you know my, my personal opinion is that um money doesn't define you but how much money you make through your business does validate the work you do mm. and, and as as one of the measure not the measure right okay and and so because it, it, i i think a lot of people and including myself sometimes too is like you know i just want to serve people and i don't really care how much money i make right um and that's great you know coming out of our own you know generosity or whatever but in the in the realistic world, um, we all need money to, to live and survive. And so when you stop making enough money from your business, what happens to our psychology is, is that you start to doubt the value and the worthiness of your work. And then mm. and then from there, then you start doubting yourself and your you know self-worth. So it's kind of the, this, it's they're all kind of interrelated. Um so that's why you know i i really think and, and i think a lot of people um you know would not equate spirituality and money to be like in the same place you know a lot of people in the spiritual world feel like i don't that's all material stuff i don't need and i'm i'm like unless you really committed to be a monk go living somewhere up on the mountain somewhere you do need money to live so so let's just come down a little bit and it's really at the intersection of your own spirituality. And I don't mean it in a, in a religious way, but like in really in the your own knowing yourself and your own worthiness, your who you are. And if you can really marriage that with your comfortable and healthy relationship with money and without feeling the shame of making money and wanting a good life, that's where that's where so that's where you get to flow and where you like you know that's where the magic happens and, and, and the happier you are the happier you are in your home at work with everybody else so it, it, it's a positive and it's a positive energy right and and also i will say money takes the blame for many many things right so let's assume somebody who grew up in a in a family where maybe their parents are not the were not the most supportive mm. and um maybe you grew up with things like who do you think you are or uh or we don't have money for that uh you know i can because it, these are like really spend so much yeah we spend too much you know and and stop doing that you know whatever the the, the um the negative talks the, the negative talks yeah f from the parents and so it, you know a lot of it is actually from those conditioning right it and then it shows up in how we deal with money so again money wasn't the source of lack of self-worthiness the lack of self-worthiness actually came from somewhere else but we manifested it in how we actually deal with our money in our day-to-day -day life 
And so that's why I said, you know, it's so it's such a you know ball of wax that we need to like really just pull out the different pieces and then cut through this clutter of all this mental struggles mm. and fighting in our head and in our, in our emotions to really get to a really a peaceful place where you feel completely aligned with the work that you do and the amount of money you make and without feeling the shame and absolutely enjoying what you have. So There's coming to self-worth and realizing that you deserve it and you are worthy of success. You are worthy of uh, being at the top of your game, being having that position, by the way, in the movie, she does get the position and Good. he does work for her and they do get married and he takes care of the children more because she's doing the more of the work. And yet they are very loving together. So mm -hmm. it was a beautiful story, which is where I wanted to um, understand is what is the one challenge that you have overcome? And it may not be about money. It may not be about success, but overall in your life, a challenge that you overcame, that you have come to embrace and now you're teaching others how you're making an impact. Yeah, you know, I think um, for me in my life, I've been very, very blessed that um, I can't think of like a big, big tragedy or, you know, big thing that I had to overcome. So knock on wood, um, but it doesn't mean that I haven't had any uh, challenge, you know, small challenges. And, and so maybe it's also, a function of how I look at these things when, when I come mm. across. So, you know, I, I, I find that now I'm, I'm reflecting a lot more. I find that whenever something, you know, a challenge or whatever that comes into my life, I don't make a big deal out of it. i am just like, I take it as I, as I, I go, as I take it, you know, or I take it as I go. Um, and, and just see it as part of life. Beautiful. And so mentally, I downplay the significance or the weight of the challenges and I focus on what needs to get done in the moment. Which and is a so perfect segue to my next question. If you were to give few tools or techniques um, to all individuals here, it doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman or whatever, mm -hmm. but for individuals listening to our listeners, mm -hmm. what would be few techniques and tools for them to start becoming a higher achiever or shifting their mindset, reset their belief about deserving and accumulating more money? Yeah, yeah. So great question. And, you know, when it comes to deserving, I, I want to say this, we all, every one of us in this world, we all deserve everything in the world that we could ever want so it's never a question of deserving and I know for some people maybe they have been growing up in an environment where they've been told that they, do, they don't deserve this or that but um that is the truth that we all deserve oh, thank everything you for in the world that. but at the same time so but the key is though we don't get to have everything at the same time right so there's priorities and, and that's the, that's the choices we have to make. So if I were to say, you know, what are the specific skills or tools that, that each one of us have to, we need to have is to really sharpen your, your, your skills on making choices. Uh, because we all deserve everything, but we all know that we're not going to get everything in the world because we actually don't have the capacity to have everything and we don't necessarily want everything in the world, right? So so it, it really comes down to making strategic and intentional choices for what would move the needle for you and what's more important to you in your life. And, and that is part of the, the deeper deeper work that I do with the clients is, is, you know, really understanding what it, what really matters in their life. Okay. And because I was talking to that? someone and she was saying, oh my God, everything is so expensive. Even, I mean, school is expensive for the kids. The kids want everything. And it's just like credit cards piling up. And yet 
you know, life still goes on. All the bills have to be paid. So how do we start managing and saving? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So you know what? Then, so the first step is, again, it, it is it is absolutely critical that we turn inward to really understanding who we are, establish, you know, creating healthier relationship with money. Now, beyond that, on the practical level, it comes down to the grit, right? It comes down to establishing a money management habit. So do create a budget, track everything you spend. I just had a class with a 20 year old, right? Teaching them how to, how to use a budget worksheet. And, um, it, and then you, you track it. It, it, it so money is like a sports. So if you look at all the good athletes in the world, uh, the Olympians or, you know, the football players, they don't just become number one. They don't just get good. They practice every single day for hours and hours and hours. Correct. You don't need to do that, but you do need a structure where you actually practice on a regular basis. And if you actually do it right, it doesn't have to be a lot of work. We just don't have the habit of doing it. And so once you create the habit, then it's, you know, it's a matter of like once a month or maybe a two times a month where you check certain things in your finances and you, on a quarterly basis, you review your overall finances. And on a yearly basis, it's absolutely critical that you do financial planning every single year and to see if there are any things that, that need to be adjusted from last year's. And maybe you have some new goals. So I, I think that the challenge for a lot of people really comes from people really live their, their life by the sea of their pants. I mean, when it comes to finances, they may be very focused on other things. They may be very focused on building business or pursuing a career. But when it comes to personal finance, I find most people don't have that discipline and habit. And that, that's really what it takes. I mean, if you're talking about how to, how to start saving, there's no, there's no special magic to it. It's actually quite simple. You just have to do it. I don't know if that helped. That answers your question. Yes. Uh, it's one of the habits they say, pay yourself first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And, and that's, that's one of the practice, right? When you're, when you're having your, especially when you have your own business, but it's the same thing, even if you're a salary worker, right? Is that um, when you take the income from your paycheck, what do we do in most cases? People just pay this, pay this, pay this, pay this, and then spend on certain everything. And then it's like, oh, well, I only have $100 left. Okay, that's the savings. Versus thinking, I'm making this money, amount of money. I want to save $500 a month. And so if I take that first, pay myself first, then I, I only get to spend whatever's left over, right? So it's completely shifting the priorities in life. Um, you know, I think for most people, especially in the American society, they prioritize expense over savings. So that that's that's the result of it is because we don't save enough and people don't save enough because they prioritize save, um, expenses, spending first. I like that. They prioritize expenses first. Over, over, over saving and investing. Yeah. So it, <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's a validation. <laughs> That, that, I, I automatically say that's a validation. <laughs> <laughs> that's so true because having my own business, I have to prioritize everything else who to give before I take it myself. <laughs> so thank you very much for the reminder, which I'm going to. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would definitely, you know, to, I would definitely say um, focus on your need first. This is how much money I need to make this month. And then the rest is what I get to spend. And then it actually forces us to become, to, to become more efficient with our resources too. And that's, a, that's, that's wonderful because I usually say, okay, this is how much the expense is. This is how much I have to make. And then everything else is anything above that is mine. Right, right. Yeah. So we need to completely shift that order. Yes, which is a great point. I mean, this was worth everything. So I just got therapy, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> which 
um, reminds me to share that um, I hope uh, you will be attending our 3E event. And for any of our viewers, Yulin hopefully will be at our 3E event in September and you'll bring your books and everyone can come and meet you. You might even do uh, sell not not only sell your books, but also do an autographed um, book signing and everything. Yeah, I would love that. Yes, uh, a lot of the powerful she ladies are going to be there from our powerful she book. We're going to be launching our book there, and some of our past book from the powerful female immigrants hopefully will be there. So I look forward. And I thank you for saying yes, not only for this interview, but also being a coach, being who you are, and not only achieving as money, but achieving as the success that you say you are. And you've got an upcoming retreat in Italy. You're traveling to Paris. And above all, I want everyone to know. Yulene well, is an you. amazing photographer. Oh, thank you. I'm actually an amateur. I, I started learning a couple of years ago. But so, but, you know, again, I think this is part of what I enjoy so much of my own lifestyle right now is that I'm in a place where I'm working, doing the work that I love, and I get to enjoy the things that I want to enjoy in life. And, and so that that is really the ultimate goal of us, you know, whatever career you're in, whatever business you're in, you know, to make money, like why? Well, it's because at least for me, I want to be able to live the lifestyle that I want. And and so I'm I'm really, really happy and, and wanting to bring more women onto the same journey with me. Amen. <laughs> so thank you all for being present. And uh, today's episode was wonderful. And I, you know, one, one thing I love is on our dollar bill, right on top, it says, in God we trust, and it's got its own energy. So every dollar bill, every money, everything that we touch in life, even the relationships that we create and we invest in, right, is all energy and love and abundance. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you so much for being on Real Talk with Lisa. And for those of you who are watching, I look forward to seeing you at our event and especially next week. Until then, God bless you and may the universal light surround you always. Thank you, Yulin. Thank you. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here.